Father God, thank you for giving this day. Thank you for letting us start our day um, with chapel. Um, help us to listen to your sermon and sermon well and learn from it. Um, help us to help the students to get ready for the midterms and help us to stay safe and healthy during this week. I pray everything in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm really happy to be here today. And how are you guys doing this morning? Doing okay? Wow, we have a little people too. How you? How are you, boys and girls? I'm talking to you guys. Okay. So, yep. Um, I haven't been here for about three years. Wow, last time I was here was about three years ago. I'm so excited to be here today. And I know many of you still. But there are a lot of new faces as well. So, but we are going to have a great worship service today, right? Okay. I'm going to talk about the discovery, discovering the power of a prayer. And that's the topic that we're going to be talking about today. Now, the Bible tells us to pray. The Bible tells us to pray every day, all the time, without ceasing. Shiji malgo. Even Jesus Christ, he prayed all the time. Why? Because there is a something hidden in the prayer. There is a power in the prayer. So every time you pray, there's something amazing things to happen. What is that? What does it happen when you pray? Whatever you request to God, God will answer your prayer. Amen? Okay, that's what the Bible says. So today, I'm going to talk about discovering the power of a prayer. So whenever you pray, you're going to find out what happens. You're going to find what good things to happen in your life. So we are going to look at James chapter 5, verse 13 together. Now, this is a very short verse, so we are, we are going to read this together in loud voice, okay? Let's begin. Is anyone among you in trouble? Let him pray. One more time, one, one more time in one voice. Begin. Is anyone among you in trouble? Let him pray. Let him pray. Amen. It says, if you have any problem, if you have any trouble, then you need to pray. So in any trouble that you have, you need to come to God. Now, do you have any problems? Do you have any problem with your friends? Do you have problems with your parents? How many of you have a little problem with your parents? Raise your hand if you have a little. Oh, you do have a little problem with your parents? Okay. Uh, okay, thank you for being honest, okay? Yeah, she said that. Yeah, I do have some problem with my parents. I don't laugh, but many of you, I, I mean, probably most of you have some experience having some little issues with your parents, right? Mom and dad. I mean, that's being honest. Or do you have a little problem with your teacher? Those kind of little things that happen in our lives, we experience those little problems every time, right? Now, if you have a, those little problems, what do you do? What do you have to do? You need to pray. The Bible says that you need to pray. You need to pray. That's what the Bible says. One interesting thing is that how God changes your brain. Many scientists these days found that your brain works better if you pray. If you pray, your brain functions much better. Now, this is a very famous book. This is like one of the best-selling books that came out about 10 years ago. It says that Dr. Andrew Newberg He's the uh, researcher, neuroscientist, a brain researcher. He's a professor at the University of Pennsylvania, one of the uh, Ivy League schools. It's a very, very good school. And your parents would probably want to send you there. Now, for many years of his own research, he said that if you pray, if you pray, your brain works better. Eventually, you'll be smarter you'll be more creative, and you'll become wiser. That's amazing, right? 
If you pray, he said that particularly if you pray 12 minutes a day, if you just pray 12 minutes a day, and you become smarter and creative and become more wiser. Now, every day you come to school and study six or seven hours a day, right? And when you go home, you study maybe on one or two more extra hours. So you, you spend several hours a day, each day, learning about new things and becoming smarter and wiser and being more creative. But the thing is this, if you pray for just for 12 minutes a day, you can accomplish all this. Isn't that fantastic? That's amazing. That's why, that's one of the reasons that you have to pray every day. Now, as some of you might say that, is that really true? I mean, I don't, you know, you might say that you don't believe it, but yes, it's true. Based on many researchers, scientists, research, based on human brain and the meditation, prayer, they found really strong correlation, connection between. So trust. This is our brain image. There is a special scanning machine that, that scans your brain and that it shows like this. Now, one on the left is a you know, person who are doing just nothing, just average person. You're not doing anything. It's just like, you know, uh, standing like this. But here is a person who's a praying. This is your for, uh, front, uh, uh, front brain, forehead. Now, do you see the difference between the first one and the second one? So the second one is when you pray, your brain functions a little bit uh, different. So what it means is that you see that connection right here. There's a disconnected brain over there. So when you pray, your brain cells are being connected. Brain works better and more connected to each other. Becomes more active. And neurons and synapses. Now when you pray, neurons are connected even more by synapses. Neurons are the bi uh, uh, our brain cells. Neurons are the, the tiny brain cells. And then, if you want to be smarter, then these neurons must be connected. Connected. But they cannot connect by themselves. They need synapses. Synapses are the, uh, more likely they are uh, uh, connectors. So neurons, our brain cells, cannot really connect each other. But they have to use the synapses. But when you pray, the neurons and synapses have become very active. So they are connecting each other, making your brain cells connect more and more, which means you're going to be smarter. So when you pray, your brain cells are being connected in a more complicated way, which is a good way. So you can become more uh, smarter. Now, another interesting thing is that Dr. Newberg, Dr. Andrew Newberg, he also found out that if you smile, there's an amazing thing happens. If you smile, now, your front brain, front brain is your thinking brain. It's called a uh, 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 frontal lobe brain. Front brain is thinking brain, but there is another brain inside our skull. It's called inner brain, but it's also feeling brain. Now, if you smile, if you smile more, there's a thinking brain and emotional brain, uh, a feeling brain, they connect each other, they work together, they're being so active together. So as a result of that, what happens is that you can make a better decision. That's also a fantastic, amazing result here. So which means is that if you smile more, you can make better decisions. I want you to smile, turn to each other. I want you to smile at each other. 서로 보고 한번 smile 한번 해봐요. Smile, <laughs> okay? <laughs> okay, if you smile, you can make better decisions. I didn't know that myself either. Now, 
if you don't know what to do, you know, sometimes you, you can't make decisions, right? You're not even sure which decision is the right decision. So you struggle, oh, I, I don't know what to do. And, and, and you, you don't know what college you want to go. You, you don't know what, what kind of job you want to have in the future. So when, when you cannot make any decisions for your life, or your, with your relationship or whatever, then I want you to pray. God will give you wisdom. It's not just about our psychological thing. It's also a biological thing, which means our inner brain and outer brain works together. That, that makes us better dis, decision makers. So you can make good decision if you pray and if you smile. So today I taught you two things, praying and smiling. If you pray, you become smarter, you become wiser, and you become more creative. If you smile, you can make better decisions. So in your daily life, school life, if you don't know what to do, start praying that God will give you wisdom and they will help you to make better decisions. You know, it was about eight or nine years ago, back in Los Angeles, I was serving as an associate uh, pastor at a large church. And my job was uh, standing in front of the uh, uh, church lobby and then greeting people. So I've been doing that for many years. And then one day my sister came and says that, you know, do you know this lady named this Chipsanim? So I said, no, not really sure. But she knows you very well. Does she really? And then uh, my sister says, oh, she doesn't like you. Why? <laughs> I was like, shock. she doesn't like me because you know, I, I don't even know her. And she said every time she saw me, she, is, you know, she told my sister that I never smiled. You know, I'm a good, I, I, I smile all the time, right? I, I real, literally, I smile all the time. But for some reason, whenever she saw me, I didn't smile. So she felt that kind of a little offended. So, <laughs> and then she told my sister that, oh, I don't like Pastor Chris. <laughs> Since then, I intentionally try to smile a lot more. I mean, you know, that could, that could happen to your life. You're a really nice guy, but for some reason, you didn't smile, and then some people misunderstand who you are. Today, I talked about two things. Smiling is pretty easy, right? You can always smile. But prayer, no, you can? Or you have like a big response to my, my question, okay? But many people don't know how to pray. So I'm going to teach you how to pray very quickly. Now, I taught this method to my church elders. They love it. They love this little method. But probably some of you heard about this five finger prayer. Five finger. Oh, you probably heard about this. Five finger prayer. Now, oh, every time you pray, you don't know what to say. You don't know what to say to God. Like, even praying for two or three minutes, you don't know what to say. Then think about this five finger. Five finger prayer, okay? So every time you pray, imagining that five fingers. Thumb, index finger, and middle finger, ring finger, and pinky. I used to have a dog named Pinky. She died about three years ago. <laughs> now, Maybe as some of you have probably seen my dog before. Now, so think about this. Thumb. Omji. Thumb. This signifies it's like a number one, the best. Right? The best. Who's the best in this world? Our God. God the Father. So every time you pray, you start with the thumb. You start with God. Thanking God. Glorifying God. You just simply say, God, thank you for creating me. Thank you for giving me wisdom. Thanking, uh, you know, thanking God for giving you good parents and good teachers and good friends. So always uh, start with thanking God, glorifying God, okay? Index finger, 
you know, sometimes we use our index fingers pointing our finger at someone, right? Like this. Oh, it's, you know, it's not really sitting now. Is oh, you, you're talking too much. So this, I call this a sin finger because you know, instead of talking or blaming yourself, you're blaming somebody else's. So every time you think about uh, index finger. Think about this as like, oh, I don't want to blame anybody else. I don't want to uh, put my finger at someone else. But this is like a sin. This is my, we, we always do that. So every time you think about finger, the index finger, I want you to repent. Repent. So, 하나님께 감사 and repent. What about the middle finger? Middle finger is the tallest and biggest, right? Uh, don't do that, but like this, okay? <laughs> now, I want you to pray for your mom and dad, your parents. I want you to pray for your teachers, okay? Now, they are very important people for your life, in your life. So, you need to have a good teachers. You, you're going to be meeting good teachers. You're going to have a, a good parents, especially uh, 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 having a good relationship, like a good communication with your parents. So ask God to have a good communication with your parents. Ask God to have a, a, a good relationship with your uh, teachers. So middle finger is for praying for your parents, mom and dad, or, mom, or your teachers. Now next one is a ring finger. Ring finger. You know, when you get married, you put your ring on your finger. This finger is so, ring finger. But the doctor says that our the, the weakest finger is not the pinky, it's the ring finger. That's, that's kind of, a, uh, you know, uh, new things to know. Now, ring finger is the weakest finger of, of your five fingers. So, whenever you think about ring finger, I want you to think about somebody who is uh, sick, who is uh, suffering. Maybe it might be your friends. Maybe if your friends are going through some difficult time, I want you to pray for your friends. If your mom and dad having some difficulty in business or making money, pray for them. If, you, if your friends are sick, pray for them too. The last thing is a pinky. Pinky is like a small list and it symbolizes a humbleness. Humbleness. So you, pray for yourself. Pray for you. Pray for your wants. What, what you need. Ask God to give you what you need. I mean, you probably have a lot of things that you're going to be needing in your life, right? It could be wisdom. It could be knowledge. It could be, I don't know, a little extra spending money. Well, it could be a good a friends. You know, I want you to pray for the little things that, of what you need for your life. So, whenever you pray for two or three minutes, I want you to think about those are five fingers, okay? So, Thumb. What is this thumb for? Thank God. Okay? And glorify God. Index finger? Repent. It's a sin finger, so repent. Middle finger? Praying for? Your parents and teachers. And then ring finger? Somebody who is weak, sick, suffering, need help. And then... Pinky is for yourself. So, yeah, being humble and then pray for what you need to God. You know, whenever you do this, if you pray, amazing things will happen. What is that? God will answer your prayer. Trust that. I, I, I didn't say this, but the Bible said that. The Bible says, pray and God will answer your prayer. Amen?